You're listening to the Speaking Tongues podcast. I'm your host, El Sharice. Each week, I sit down to a conversation with multilinguals where we discuss and celebrate language, life, and culture through our own perspectives. Episode 69, Speaking Tahitian. Hello, language lovers. Thank you for joining me for this episode of Speaking Tongues, the podcast in conversation with multilinguals. My guest today is Moina, and we're having a conversation about the Tahitian language and the culture of French Polynesia. I learned a ton in this episode, and I hope that you listeners will as well. Moina talks to us about growing up in French Polynesia, speaking French, and learning the Tahitian language from her great-grandmother. She tells us not only about the Tahitian language, but also about the five other languages that are native to French Polynesia. We talk about the differences within the country among these different languages, and we learn about the grammatical structure of Tahitian and what makes it stand out among other languages in the South Pacific. We definitely spend some time talking about culture in French Polynesia, including a rich and meaningful storytelling tradition, and the cultural concept of mana that exists in many cultures and countries in the South Pacific. As an extra to this episode, you can find the deleted portion of the conversation by becoming a member on Buy Me A Coffee, where Moeno and I talk about Tahitian food and culinary traditions. We're discussing all of it, from seafood to desserts to tropical fruits that you probably won't find outside the region. And if you don't know much about Tahitian food, you will want to hear this. But trust me, don't listen on an empty stomach. Big thank you to Moi now for this conversation and for sharing your Tahitian language and your culture with us. If you enjoy this episode, don't forget to subscribe, rate and review the Speaking Tongues podcast on Apple Podcasts or like and subscribe on YouTube so that other language lovers like ourselves can find the show. And if you've been a longtime listener of the show or even a recent listener, you can now support the show on buymeacoffee.com. Links to all platforms are in the show notes. Okay, let's chat. One more thing. I'm taking a short break for the next few weeks. So Speaking Tongues will be back on September 13th with a new episode, a video episode that you can watch clips of on YouTube. Okay, now let's chat. Welcome back to another episode of Speaking Tongues. I'm so excited. Today, my guest is Moe Now. How are you today, Moe Now? I'm good. Thank you so much. I'm very, very good. I'm so excited to talk to you about Tahitian and I have so much to learn from you. So I'm really looking forward to this conversation. I like to start each episode with the same question. And that is, what is your first language and which languages have you learned to speak? So, okay. So it's very complicated. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to make it simple. So French is my first language. Uh, Tahiti is a French territory, uh, and um, I was born uh, in the main island, which is Tahiti, uh, and French is widely, widely spoken there. Really? I also learned uh, Tahitian, the Tahitian language, but I didn't speak much Tahitian growing up until I became an adult. Um, uh, same uh, with English. I learned English at school, uh, in junior high and during my high school years. And uh, I started, same thing, I started speaking English later on in my, my adult years. Oh, wow. So I didn't even realize that Tahiti was a department of France. It is, yeah. It's a French territory. So a lot of people are confused because uh, we call it actually French Polynesia. So French Polynesia, we have about 118 islands. And Tahiti is actually the, the biggest the biggest island. It's the main island. And that's where the capital city, Papete, is. Uh, so a lot of people are, they, they think that Tahiti is, 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 you know, all these group of islands, but it's actually French Polynesia. It's not Tahiti. Tahiti is the main island only. Oh my goodness. But it's easy for people to say Tahiti, you know, for, for all of, for, for all the islands. Right. So, yeah. Okay. Already learned something right away. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. <laughs> so you, when you, I guess in your community um, or maybe in your home, what languages did you hear um, when you were growing up? 
Um, so in my home growing up, French and Tahitian were the most spoken languages. Uh, everyone is bilingual in my family. Every people in my family, uncles, aunties, mom, everybody, uh, except for my great grandma. She knew only Tahitian. She didn't know any word in French. And I was lucky, lucky to spend a lot of time uh, with her in my childhood and grew up by her side because, because of her, uh, I'm able to understand and speak Tahitian now. Uh, mm -hmm. And she's she was really my, my teacher. Even though everyone in my family spoke French and Tahitian, uh, Tahitian was only spoken between adults. Uh, my parents never spoke or taught me Tahitian, neither my uncles and aunties, nobody. Uh, it was literally just my, my great grandmother. Uh, and, uh, but regardless, um, uh, I was surrounded by both languages uh, my entire life. So. Wow. So how in French Polynesia, how are, what is the exchange like between the French language and the Tahitian language? So I guess, for example, I'm going to assume, and you tell me if I'm wrong, in, in school or maybe in official capacity, French language is used. And then is Tahitian used ever officially, or is it mostly used among friends and family and people that you know? Yeah, that's that's a good question because even uh, till today we're still you know debating about this and you know we're going through uh, different stages uh, in Tahiti in French Polynesia uh, when it comes to uh, the importance of speaking, learning, you know, using the French language and the Tahitian language. So um, at school. Uh, Person, I learned actually three languages. French, of course, is the main language, but then I, I learned Tahitian, English, and Spanish. Um, French is the dominant language. English was actually the second most important language in, in Tahiti, believe it or not. And Tahitian came like third or even like last, almost. Wow. Um, yeah, it's sad to, to, to know that. But yeah, it is like that. Like at school, uh, Tahitian, we only had about two and a half hours uh, per week. And uh, we had more hours in English and more hours in any other languages. That was back in the day. But uh uh, according to uh, to uh, the law right now, Tahitian it still uh, it still has about like two to three hours per week um, at school. So I, I I do have a quick story about my experience uh, learning Tahitian at school mm -hmm. uh, back in the nineties. Uh, my first year in high school, I asked. Uh, to, you know, to take Tahitian. I wanted to do, you know, I, my goal was to learn Tahitian and English only. I wasn't interested to learn any other languages back then. And um, it was very, very hard for me to get a spot in a Tahitian class. Uh, I even asked to double my hours. I didn't want to learn any other language. And uh, the sad thing is, I remember my counselor telling me that it's not worth it for you to learn Tahitian because there's no future. It's a waste of time. Uh, so they kind of like forced me to to pick another language and uh, which I did. And I picked Spanish. Uh, I had no choice, but uh, I felt I, I had to to fight for my spot, uh, you know, in Tahitian class. And I, I, I eventually got in, but it was very, very hard. So Tahitian was not like valuable back then and but things are changing now uh, they are uh, because the the government is realizing that all the new generations they, they don't know how to speak Tahitian so they want to push you know the young generation to to speak the language so yeah it's 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 very very interesting that the the Tahitian language was not encouraged or you know, um, I think uh, in families, you know, in all the families in Tahitian, in Tahiti, uh, even parents wouldn't speak Tahitian uh, to their own kids, like in my own family. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it was, it's, it's sad to see that. And that's why the new generation has a hard time with the language. But right now, our fight is, is to, to bring the language back. And, uh, but it's going to take years again. Yeah. You know? Would you say that it's typical for, so you, your grandmother spoke Tahitian, your parents didn't speak Tahitian with you, and now you're teaching Tahitian or, you know, you were pushing and fighting for, advocating for yourself to learn this language. Would you say that that's a typical generational issue that maybe the grandparents 
um, you know, the grandparents had the language, the child, the children of the grandparents, the parents, um, I, I don't want to use the word resisting, but they, they had reservations about sharing mm -hmm. it with their children. And then the children are kind of rediscovering that. Is that typical of the generations, I guess, as you've observed? <laughs> it's it's not the case for everyone because there are still people like my age, you know, in my generation that still don't know the language. Uh, but I feel like the generation after me, uh, they are the ones who are, they are the rebellious, like they are the ones who are uh, demanding to learn the language because these, uh, like our children, I'll say all children, because they're the ones who have like, didn't have that immersion, like didn't have that exposure to the language. Uh, at least my generation, we still had Tahitian at home, even though we weren't speaking, it was still there. It's still there. It was, we were surrounded by it. Right. Um, so, um, yeah, I, I, I don't know, uh, honestly, too many people in my generation, like of my age, who are uh, doing what I'm doing. There's, there's still, uh, it, it's not the case for everybody. I, 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 that's what I can say, as far as I know. So, but I hope things will change. And, and, and I know I'm not the only one. There are some people who are, who are my age, huh, who are fighting for it. Uh, and I hope, and, and there is a movement that is happening right now. So I hope that uh, uh, it will, you know, influence the future generation. I really do. Yeah, I hope so too, because it's, I think we've all learned, uh, whatever culture you're from, that it's so easy for your history to become lost to, you know, whether it's your language or your customs or whatever the case is, it's so easy when you're not diligent and maybe you take it for granted, it, it's, these things can be gone within a generation. So absolutely. I, yeah. yeah absolutely. It's really important for, you know, to, to pass, to pass the language on to, to the kids and to the future generations to ensure that, you know, the Tahitian culture and the language, you know, is there for them. And, and, you know, it's, it's important. It's, it's very important because the, the, the language is the foundation, you know, it's the foundation, it goes with culture, you can't dissociate them. And so without the language, culture doesn't exist. Right. And uh, let's not forget that um, I'm talking about the Rio Tete, which is the same case with uh, other islands of the South Pacific too. Um, the Rio Tete is, is, as I say, is the foundation of, of the culture, but a lot of people forget that if we, if one day we won't speak the language, everything will disappear. You know, uh, let's not forget that the, the the Tahitian language is an oral language. It was transmitted uh, orally from generation after generation until the colonization in the 18th century when the missionaries came over. They are the ones who who uh, put the language, who wrote down the language. Uh, but before that, it was you know transmitted orally and unfortunately uh, when uh, we went through the French colonization uh, that's where the the Tahitian language kind of like not disappeared it was still there but it was like I remember my mother even my grandmother having stories that when uh, they went to school um, they, they they weren't allowed they to speak Tahitian at all. Uh, they will get punished if they will pronounce any word in in Tahitian. So Tahitian was only only reserved uh, for a, a home, mm. you know. So they went through that, and maybe that's why, uh, and that explained why our parents uh, they held themselves for you know like teaching the language. Uh, in, it, it's almost like they were brainwashed in saying that, okay, French has to be the main one, the main right. language. Tahitian comes after, or maybe not, who knows? But it, it, it kind of like devalue the, the, the Tahitian language, which is really sad. Yeah. But I'm very positive. I think things are changing and I hope uh, we will get back this language uh, because we need it. We absolutely, absolutely need it. Absolutely. Before we get into talking about the language, I want to situate myself. So, and the listener, I have a map open. Yes. And I put in Tahiti and it took me to French Polynesia. Yes. As you said, and it has like circles around the islands that are part of French Polynesia. 
So Tahiti is the big one or is it? Yes, okay. yes, it is. That's the biggest island. Yes. Okay. And are we also talking about Bora Bora? Yes. Okay. So let me explain really quick about geography. By the way, I'm a big fan of geography. Me too. Uh, <laughs> so uh, French Polynesia. So we have about 118 islands total in French Polynesia, and we are a group in five different groups of islands. Um, so we have the Society Islands, the Tuamotu Islands, the uh, Marquesas Islands, the Austral Islands, and the, the Gambier Islands. So five different groups of islands. Okay. And each, uh, the Society Islands, uh, or the main ones, like the, actually they have the biggest uh, like island in size I'm talking about. And so Bora Bora is part of the Society Islands. So that's very like about 45 minutes flight uh, from Tahiti. Uh, all the way to Bora Bora. Okay, got it. Okay. It's just like, as soon as I zoom out, I can't see where the red borders are around the island. <laughs> and the next one that showed up was Bora Bora. So I was like, okay, it's got to be that. But <laughs> Bora Bora is very, very popular. It's a well-known place because uh, internationally, this is, it's a beautiful island. Like, oh, it, it's it's paradise, let me tell you. Uh, and uh, so the, the Tahiti tourism, they, they, they took actually Bora Bora as the, the image of French Polynesia. Oh. Yeah. So that's why all the pictures you see on Internet, you know, about Tahiti, when you Google Tahiti, uh, of course, you're going to see a lot of like beautiful beaches, the overwater bungalows. Uh, this is mostly Bora Bora. Uh, it's it's not Tahiti, uh, and I have to specify that because a lot of people think like when they get to Tahiti and they're like, oh, this is not what I saw on internet. Uh, yeah, because what you saw was Bora Bora; it was in Tahiti. Huh. So, is Tahiti what what is what is Tahiti like? Like you know, Tahiti, uh, Tahiti. There's a lot of mountains. We don't have enough like a flat land in Tahiti. We have a lot of valleys. Um, it's, um, uh, of course, it, because it's the main island, so we, it, it's more populated. We have more people there, more residents. Um, and we don't have a lot of beautiful beaches in Tahiti. And that's the number one thing that pe the tourists are looking for when they get to Tahiti. It's, it's literally not in Tahiti. But when you go in the other islands, like for example, Moorea is the, it's the island that is across Tahiti. Uh, it's called the sister island. Okay. Uh, they have, this is where you can find like the beautiful beach, you know, overwater and bungalows. It's all there, you know, Mooria, Bora Bora, the uh, Taha, you know, all these other islands. But Tahiti, Tahiti is is not. Uh, Tahiti is a good place for hiking. Uh, you know, as I say, we have a lot of mountains there. Uh, hiking, you know, rivers, a uh, lot of culture, historical places. Uh, yeah, this is more Tahiti than, you know, all the beach and Blue Lagoon and stuff. Yeah, I like that you're saying that because I would have no idea. And <laughs> <laughs> because I, I hear Tahiti and I think a lot of people, you know, Bora Bora became like that like a few years ago, it was like the honeymoon destination. Yes. And, and it still is. <laughs> still is. Yes. And like you said, like the overwater bungalows and it just looks like heaven. It is. Um, and, and and don't get me wrong. It, it, it's not, you know, all those pictures that you see, you know, it's not fake. It, it's really real. It's true. It, it, that's why it became the honeymoon destination because people want to just go. It's romantic. It's beautiful. It's clean. Uh, I mean, of course, you know, people are attracted to, to you know, to, to go there. Yeah. You see, it's funny because, you know, all, like I, I said earlier, I mentioned the five group of islands. You know what? Each group of islands have their own, like, uh, uh, type of islands. Like, for example, in the Tuamotu Islands, there's no mountain at all. They're all atolls. You know, they're all like flat, mm -hmm. small islands. There's zero, zero mountains there. Uh, so they have a different uh, scenery, you know, different, different, different trees, different, everything is different. Lack of water, 
you know, versus in Tahiti, we have plenty of water right. uh, because we have tons of rivers and waterfalls there. I, I mean, yeah, everything is just like each island, each group of islands have their own charm. Yeah. Well, I'm ready to come visit. <laughs> <laughs> I'll help you. No problem. I can uh, be your guide. <laughs> So let's talk about the Tahitian language. Um, mm -hmm. I know that Polynesian languages have some commonalities amongst themselves, but when it comes to Tahitian language, what are some things that make it stand out in the, in the region? Okay, so um, yes, there are a lot of commonalities. So first, like I said earlier, we have five groups of islands and each group of island has its own language. Okay, so French Polynesia has five languages and it's not only the Rio Teti. So the Rio Teti, which is the Tahitian language, the, the, the language that I grew up learning mm -hmm. is the official language in all French Polynesia. This is basically what I'm teaching here, right? The Rio Teti. Okay. That's the official language, but each group of island has its own. So, uh, for example, the Society Islands, their uh, language is the Rio Teti. Uh, Marquesas language is spoken in the Marquesas uh, group of islands. The Paumutu language is spoken in the Tuamutu Islands. The Austral language is spoken in the Austral Islands. And the Mongarevan language is spoken in the Gambier Islands. Okay. So, yeah, a lot of people are confused with that. So, the Tahitian language called the Rio Teti is the official language of French Polynesia, but it is mostly spoken in the society islands, which includes Tahiti, Bora Bora, Moorea, you know, all these islands. And uh, between all five different languages, there are, of course, a lot of similarities. Uh, some words are very, very, very similar. Some words are super different. Uh, it's very interesting uh, to to you know, look at the differences. Like for example, the word uh, house uh, in Tahitian, in Tahitian, in Reo Teiti, we say fare, fare. House in Paumutu, we say fare, it's the same thing. But then house in Marquesas is fae, fae, we drop the R. Oh. House, house in uh, Austral language, Austral uh, languages is are, we drop the F. And then house in Mongariven is are also, we drop the F. So see, it's, it's similar, but different. Right. So yeah, there's a lot of uh, uh, words like that between, you know, all five languages of French Polynesia. Oh, wow. So how does Rio Titi, like, how does that, how does that official language let's let's say Marquesas for example mm -hmm. um how do people I guess in Marquesas like how do they use the their Marquesian and the Rio Titi together is there a dialect of Rio Titi or is there um do, do the languages in, influence one another <laughs> yeah it's it's very interesting to uh it's a good question so um, let me use the same example as you mentioned here for the Marquesas language. So the Marquesas language is mostly spoken only in the islands, in the group islands of the Marquesas. You know what I mean? So like rarely we will he like hear or see or, you know, someone speaking Marquesas language in Bora Bora, for example. So okay. they use these languages only in their own group of islands between themselves, right? They, they speak there. Uh, however, the majority, the majority of the people from, from French Polynesia, they all understand the Rio Teti. That's why they, that's why the Rio Teti is the official language because it's it's like it's spread amongst all of the islands of, of, of uh, French Polynesia. Now uh, they are, they are they, they, we don't have any dialects. Like I said, it's five different languages, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, with the Austral language, they do have some dialects, they do. Uh, and and it, it goes like per different islands. For example, the Austral islands, they have five uh, islands. Uh, they have Rurutur, Eivave, Rapa, Rimatara. So each island, they have their own dialect. 
Okay. You know, it's, but it, it's not, it's not for all the islands. It, that's, that's, as far as I know, that's, that's the only dialects that I know. Okay. How about among uh, Rio Titi, how about other Polynesian languages? Um, Samoan, yeah, from Hawaiian, the South Maori, mm-hmm. like, where do you see intelligibility among <laughs> <laughs> among yes. related in the in that same family language family yes there there is also uh, a connection you know between the languages of French Polynesia and the languages of the other uh, South Pacific islands or culture I'll say or countries uh, and, and history can tell because we all through the history, you know, there was that whole migration of people uh, who, tra- who travel uh, between all these islands. So all the islands of the Polynesian Triangle, you know, uh, in the north, you have Hawaii. On the east, hi- east side, you have um, uh, Aotearoa, which is New Zealand. On the right side, you have Rapa Nui. And French Polynesia is right in the middle of the, the Polynesian Triangle. So all the islands of the Polynesian Triangle, they there are all other languages are part of the same group of languages that we call the Austronesian languages. Okay. And uh, so the Austronesian languages, they are, uh, the reason why they are in the same group of languages is because the, the structure, the words, they are very, very similar, but still different. You know, it's similar, but still different. And between those languages, there are small groups of languages again. For example, the Marquesas language is very, very close to the Hawaiian language. Mm-hmm. The Reo Tehiti, the Tahitian language, is very, very close to the Maori language. Uh, so it's, oh. it's really, really interesting. Uh, I'm actually a student of Maori language. I started la- last year during the pandemic. Oh, wow. And, uh, yes, I'm, I'm learning because my one of my closest friends is a teacher of uh, Maori language. And I was always fascinated about, you know, discovering like other languages of the South Pacific anyway. So I jumped in and I was like, okay, I'm going to learn the Maori. And uh, my surprise uh, I was very, very fascinated by the language because the structure of the Maori language is so close, like so close to the, the Tahitian language. And this is why I, I, I didn't have, you know, like it wasn't really hard for me to learn Maori because it was, it's exactly the same. I mean, it's not exactly the same, but it's so, <laughs> it's so close, you know? What is the structure like? No, when I talk about the structure, I'm talking about like the way we formulate our sentences. Right. It's, it's the same way. For example, uh, house, uh, I'm going to, I'm stuck with that house example. Uh, house in Tahitian, as I said earlier, is fare. Uh, in Maori, it's also fare, but it's written differently. Fare, it's in Maori, it's written with the W and H. The WH, it's F in, in Maori. So fare in Tahitian, F-A-R-E. And then fare in Maori, it's W-A-H-A-R-E. Mm. Um, in Hawaiian, house is hale. In Samoan is fale. In Tongan is also fale. And in uh, Rarotongan is ari. So y- you know what I mean? It's so similar. Yeah. Fare, fare, hale, fale, fale, ari. Same, same, same thing. So Mm -hmm. yeah, there's a lot of uh, commonalities between all these languages. About Tahitian and the structure of the language, how, how does the structure of the language work? I guess like how are sentences formed? How are, you know, what's the grammatical word order and things like that? So in Tahitian, everything starts with a verb. Okay. We have, um, and it's actually a cultural concept. Uh, The Tahitian people uh, or, or I can say Polynesian people, and it's the same with the Maori, everything is focused on the action, the verb, right? Uh, versus uh, in English or even in French, uh, we always start with the subject, like who is involved in the action. Like for example, I am eating. The verb eating comes after, but the subject comes first, I, right? Uh, but with the Tahitian language, even Maori, it starts with the verb. So it's, for example, um, I want to say, uh, I am eating in Tahitian, te amu ne yo. So amu is 
the verb to eat. Neyao rao rao means I. So it's like if I translate word by word, it's like eating I, mm. you know, word by word. And so in Tahitian, we use like little words to indicate the tense of the sentence. For example, the, you know, the present tense, past tense, and future tense. So uh, to say amu, eat to eat, te amu neyao, I am eating. E amu neyao, I will eat. See, amu is still in the beginning of your sentence. Right. Uh, and uh, I ate wa amu, wa amu vo. So amu, the verb to eat always, always come first. And uh, uh, that, that's just how it is. Because back in the day, uh, Tahitian, they don't care who is involved, like how it's happening. You know, they just want to know what is the action? <laughs> is somebody eating? Is somebody sleeping? What is it? That, that's how they think, mm. uh, the Tahitian people. They don't care who or how or, you know, they just want to know, okay, wh what is the action? Mm. So that, that's, how, that's how I explain the structure very easily without going into the technical uh, details, you know, of grammar. Yeah. So I think and that's, so that's really interesting. And it makes me wonder about the historical necessity for having to get to the action first yes because uh, uh back in the day we were very action oriented right people. right we we don't like sit down and talk all day about the sun and how the sun looks like it, it's all about like what am i gonna do with the sun okay am i gonna plant some some food some tar some taro am i what, what am i gonna do with mm. it you know it's very very action oriented it, it's and, and and you can observe that still now in the tahitian mentality uh it's funny because it, there's a big conflict between the tahitian people and the french people uh while the french people are very good at communicating and expressing you know whatever or describing things versus the Tahitian they were like uh, I don't care about all this just tell me what's up well what is the the deal here you know and we Tahitians they they act before speaking versus the French they speak before acting right so that that's that's always a, a conflict uh between the French and Tahitian uh in Tahiti <laughs> so in as far as the language goes and incorporating the French, is there a type of pidgin or Creole or uh, joining of uh, Tahitian and French that emerged from these two languages always being used side by side? <laughs> so uh, there are no pidgins or Creole, you know, type of languages. But, you know, I'm thinking about it. It's it could be possible or maybe in the future it will eventually happen because in Tahiti, we mix French and Tahitian a lot, right. especially in Tahiti. And I'm, I'm, ta I'm not talking about all French Polynesia. Uh, it's li literally in Tahiti. And it, 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 it makes sense because Tahiti, since it's the main city, it, there's a lot of influence there. You know, there's a lot of uh, uh, influence, a lot of people back and forth. And so there's a lot of French people. So of course, uh, there's there's a lot of mix, you know, between French and, and and Tahitian. Even the new generation, there's a lot of young, the youth, you know, there's a lot of them who don't know how to speak Tahitian at all, but they know a lot of words in Tahitian. So they incorporate those words in the, the French language. So I don't know, maybe in the future, uh, I don't know if we continue that way, uh, maybe something will emerge, but I hope it will not because I, I like the fact that we make the difference between both languages. Yeah. But um, here's the thing though, it's only in Tahiti because the further you go in the other islands, uh, people don't mix languages. They are pretty consistent. Uh, and, and that's what I like about the people who live in the further islands, because I, I truly believe that they are the ones who speak the true Tahitian or the real Tahitian, because they don't mix, uh, they stay true to, to the language. Like, for example, even in Marquesas, in the Marquesas Islands, uh, they speak Marquesas only or French, 100% French. They don't, they don't mix. Uh, it's, it's literally only in Tahiti. Tahiti, right. even Mo'orea and, 
you know, like the, the, the islands of the, the society islands, they, they, there's a lot of mix because of the influence. Right. So, yeah. Right. I get that. I totally get that. And it makes me wonder if, if I go to French Polynesia anywhere in the, in the, in the islands, where would I, where would I hear, I guess I'd hear French everywhere in an official capacity, but where would I, as an outsider, where would I hear Tahitian? Well, or, you, you, or any or any of the languages in any the, other languages. Yeah, you will hear even in Tahiti. But again, it depends with 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 who you are, you know, with whom you are. Um, uh, it, it depends on in, of your surrounding, you know, like, for example, uh, I send a lot of, of my students, even, you know, groups to Tahiti, you know, to visit. The majority of them are, are involved in the Ori Tahiti, which is the Tahitian dance. And uh, because you're so like involved in the Tahitian culture, Tahitian dance, of course, they are in touch with a lot of people who knows the language very well. So it's easy for you to be exposed to the language because these guys, they, they speak 100% in Tahitian. But as a tourist, uh, if you just go like that, you don't know anybody and, you know, you go along, you go to the hotel, you go to the marketplace, visiting all the historical sites and, and whatever. Um, yeah, there, there's, it, it will be hard to, to speak Tahitian 100% there. Mm. But I'm not saying that it's not existent because it is. Uh, if you go to the marketplace, which is one of our number one stops, you know, for all tourists in Tahiti, and it's located in the, the capital city, Papeete, um, most of all the vendors, they are from the islands and they all speak 100% Tahitian. Oh, great. Yeah, they all they all do. They have maybe uh, like a, they hire someone or uh, they have their their grandkids or kids to help them, you know, sell their products. And these guys, of course, they speak French. But otherwise, all these people, they all speak Tahitian. So Tahitian is there. It's not that it, it, it's gone, you know, uh, it, it's there. But again, it depends with who you're talking to and, you know, who you're interacting yeah. with. Yeah. The reason why I ask that question is because I always think about people who live in countries or or cities that are, I'm going to say, exploited for tourism. And I always think about the people who live there and they speak their language and they have their own customs and their own culture, and they often have to defer to a colonial language or they mm -hmm. have to for, uh, defer to those cultures and I wonder where they get to express themselves and if they don't get a chance to express their own language and their own customs because there are tourists around or there's this tourist industry that they have to right. cater to and I it just it always makes me curious um, you know to know because if I went to Tahiti Okay, I I would be expected to communicate in French. Um, excuse me. <clears throat> uh, I'd be expected to communicate in French, but because it's me and because I'm curious, like I want to know where I can hear people speaking their own language and doing their own thing mm -hmm. uh, outside of that. And yeah. I I don't I don't know that a lot of honeymooners and you know, people who are just, just there to relax and, and partake in tourism. I don't know that they care about that and that they want to see that. I would, <laughs> and I hope, I hope that other people would. No, they, yeah, they, there's a lot of other people who would believe me because I, 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 like I said, you know, I organize a lot of trips to Tahiti and I'm mostly with people who are, who are seeking for cultural immersions or, you know, experience and, uh, so yes, you're, you're not the only one. There's a lot of people who, who would love, you know, to uh, hear, you know, the, the locals speak their, their native language and not only hear, but even learn. And so, as I said, like, it's not, it's not completely gone. It's there. Uh, mm -hmm. Believe me, it, we, uh, you just, you know what, even uh, you just arrive in Tahiti and you start having a conversation in Tahitian with simple sentences. Let me tell you, Tahitians, they love that. <laughs> uh, they will engage the conversation with you. Uh, I, I, 
it's 200% sure it, it will happen. Uh, they just need, you know, like, again, like I said, Tahitian was uh, put on the side for so many years, you know, for decades and decades. And, and, and now that we're coming back, we're bringing back the language for them to hear other people, you know, uh, speaking some words in Tahitian, it really, really, you know, like makes them happy and it, it, it motivates them too. It motivates them to, to engage uh, uh, a conversation in their own language. Yeah. So yeah, it's there. But I'll tell you right now, if you want to have 100% of, of, you know, that, that immersion, you know, with the language, uh, Tahiti is, is one of the islands, but I'll say all the other further islands are, are the best. Mm. Because people, when they, they even like on the street or at the marketplace or at the store, people converse in Tahitian. It's just natural. Yeah. So that, that it's, it's, that's just how it is. Okay. I would love to know more about the culture since we're already getting there. We're going to talk about the culture. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what, are some, what are some of your favorite things about uh, culture in French Polynesia or in Tahiti? And what are some things that, as you know, I mentioned as an outsider, um, what are some things that an outsider could know about the culture in French Polynesia that would instantly let them know that it was from these group of islands? Oh, I love this question. I love Tahitian <laughs> culture because, I mean, you can't, we can't talk about language without culture, right? Right. Um, there are so many things I love about my culture, about Tahitian culture, the Maui culture. There, there's so many things. But if I have to mention one of the things that I love, uh, it's definitely the way we Tahitian people celebrate life, the way we celebrate our culture, the way we celebrate our ancestors or, you know, or the people before us. Uh, we celebrate these, all these things through Tahitian dance, we call it the Oriteiti, oh. through music, through songs, the upa upa, through stories. Uh, we're known actually to, we're storytellers, by the way. We love to tell stories and legends and, you know, all these things. So uh, I, I think we're definitely very unique and authentic, uh, even amongst all the other islands of the South Pacific. Mm -hmm. The Oriteiti, for example, is something that is widely known all over the world, uh, even places that you wouldn't think. Uh, I had students uh, who are Oriteiti dancers, Tahitian dancers, and they were from like Slova Slovakia, from Ukraine, you know, places that you wouldn't think. So cool. And yes, and so people recognize us for that, you know, for, for the way we celebrate life, the way we celebrate our culture, our ancestors. And this is one of the things that I love. And then another thing too that I want to add, I cannot talk about it, but it's the way, the warmth of, the, the people of Tahiti, the way we welcome people to our islands, we're very, very fr friendly. You know, when you, you get to the airport, the first thing you get is like a, 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 a flower necklace, you know, flowers with fragrant smells, uh, smiles and big arms. Everybody come and kiss you. You know, this is something that that is very, very natural uh, for us Maui people. And, and yeah, those are the things that I love the most uh, about our culture. It's something that that's just natural, you know, and I love that. I'm dying. <laughs> 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 that is amazing. That's so amazing. And I'm very, I'm travel deprived right now. So I'm, <laughs> I'm just closing my eyes while you describe how how friendly everyone is and how how people are received when they come to visit and it just sounds like heaven <laughs> <laughs> i want to <laughs> i want to ask you so you mentioned um excuse me you mentioned storytelling and legends and mm. and things like that what are some of the popular stories that you know like people grow up with or people people grow up hearing from their community or from their family like what are Ooh, some of the what are so some many. of the legends <laughs>
There's so many, so many. My whole life, I learned that even at school, we actually use those things in uh, Tahitian literature. Uh, that, that was my major, by the way. It, that's what we use for, uh, we use this as a, a material, you know, to learn the language. Uh, we use a lot of our uh, old stories and legends and myth. Um, one of the most like known and popular, I'm, I'm going to make it simple and relate to the movie Moana from Disney. Do you, have you seen that movie? I have seen it and I wanted to ask you about this, but I didn't want to ask you at the same time. But <laughs> if you're bringing it up, let's talk it's just about easier. Moana. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm bringing Moana uh, it, because it's just easier. Um, and because there's a lot of truth in there. I know it's a Disney movie and it's a Disney style movie. Um, but uh, w- with the Moana uh, movie, with all the stories and basically her whole story, um, there's uh, a lot of uh, bit of stories and legends from different islands of the South Pacific. It's not only Tahiti, it's not only Hawaii, not only uh, New Zealand, you know, it's a little bit of everything. Okay. Uh, and basically because she's representing uh, Oceania, you know, all, all of our, uh, of the South Pacific. But uh, what I can mention about uh, storytelling is the story of Maui. It's something that it's uh, the one who actually uh, uh, catch the sun. You know, that's one of the most uh, popular uh, legend, that, you know, that we talk about. And so Maui is one of our uh, number one, uh, I'll say, character in most of all the legends uh, we talk about in Tahiti. And, uh, and again, it's, it's the same also for the other uh, islands of the South Pacific. And so if you go back and watch the movie and you listen to the song, You're Welcome, uh, performed by The Rock, right? Mm-hmm. So if you like pay attention to the lyrics of the song, it actually tells the story of Maui. And so the story of, Maui's, of Maui, it's basically what we like hear, learn, or, you know, we've been taught about this since we're like kids Mm. and so it's funny when the movie came out it's like oh they did actually a great job researching and you know even writing the songs because they actually took all the elements of all these stories yeah so yeah so Maui is one of them (laughs) one of the stories I'm happy to hear you say they did a great job because I that's why I didn't want to ask about it because I didn't want to be reductive (laughs) people talk (laughs) bad about it yeah I know because because the, the when the movie came out, of course, it was a lot of controversy, like everybody was just fighting over each other. Uh, I don't think like that because um, uh, I think it's because, you know, uh, Polynesian people and I say Polynesian in general, they are all like they're very conservative and that goes with the Tahitian people also. And so they want to say, like, we have the story. We are the ones. So they all have that. And, oh, that's not correct. That's not, it's not like this. It's not like that. But they, they, they didn't understand that Moana is, was representing all of us, you know, not just the Hawaiian or not just the Maori, not just the Tahitian, not just the, the Samoan. It was a little bit of everything. And I think maybe the mix didn't please everyone. So that's why there was that whole controversy. But that's not how I... I saw, I saw that as actually a unity uh, uh, way to represent all of us, you know, <clears throat> all of us from the South Pacific. So, and what, I did, I did think I, it was interesting because I'm sure that there were many children who saw themselves represented yeah. and saw some element of their culture represented. And as I say on this show all the time, representation matters. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I mean, and it's Disney. Come on, it's Disney. It's not. It's not a documentary. It's right. not a. Uh, it, it's also there to entertain. Uh, there's that whole Hollywood feel. You know, uh, it's. It is what it is. But to me, uh, for the little girl who is living in Iceland, for example, or never heard about the South Pacific, it's a great uh, like introduction, you know, to the islands and knowing that, oh, there is a story about this, about the volcano, about the whatever, about Maui, about Moana, you know, all that stuff. So to me, I see a lot of positive in this movie. Yeah. I think people were arguing because of the accuracy of, of the information that was, you know, brought in the movie, but Mm-hmm. again it, it's not a documentary it's it's disney <laughs> <laughs> it's disney That's yeah it. you gotta take disney at face value sometimes um, yes <laughs> you mentioned 
really briefly that you studied uh, literature. Yes, in in Tahitian. Yes, I Tahitian did. I did literature. four years. Yeah. What should we be reading? What Tahitian literature should we be reading? There's very like a minimum of books in English. To be honest with you, there's none. But there's a lot okay. in in French. Uh, yeah, and and that's the that, that always has been a problem because a lot of our uh, texts in Tahitian, even like old texts, they were all translated in Tahitian. Uh, we do have a few in English, and you can actually find them at the Bishop Museum in Hawaii. Uh, this is actually the only place that I know, probably New Zealand too, but mm -hmm. Hawaii has the best. They, at the Bishop Museum Library, they have a lot of books uh, about, you know, Tahiti literature, like everything, arts. Yeah, a lot of good material. Otherwise, we do have a lot of books, but it's 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 okay. mostly in French. Well, I'm sure that at least a few of my listeners can read in French, so they may. <laughs> they... <laughs> yes, yes, and 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 some of the some of the books you can find uh, some of them in in uh, on Amazon, uh, but uh, really where you can find good good books where you can really dig dig down, you know, it's uh, you can find that in Tahiti. Yeah, I have a, actually a big library here at home. Uh, my husband is a passionate of Polynesian culture. So every time we go to Tahiti, we always come back with a book. Oh, that's amazing. So, what was the last yeah, book that always. you came back with? So the last book I got, it was uh, actually the the history of the Chinese community in French Polynesia. You know, we have a big uh, Chinese community in French Polynesia. They are the ones who started the the whole business, like uh, you know, the 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 exchange, the commercial uh, businesses. It, it it was all the Chinese people. So I I, I haven't started yet <laughs> because I had so many books to read right now. But uh, that's the last book I got uh, before uh, COVID happened okay. because I went to in uh, 2019. So if you had to recommend a book, which would you recommend? So it depends uh, what exactly you want to learn. But there's one book that is if you really want to learn about Tahiti, how it all started, you know, like there's a book. I mean, this is one of my favorite books, but it's pretty. It's a thick book. It's called Ancient Tahiti. Uh, this book is is filled like, and it's in English, English uh, and French. So you, it's accessible to everyone. And I think you can find on Amazon. I'm not sure, but I think so. Uh, but I got this book at the Bishop Museum in Hawaii. So this book is is great. Mm -hmm. Ancient Tahiti. It's called Ancient Tahiti. Okay. I'm going to have a look. I'm going to look it up. <laughs> yes. In French is uh, Tahiti aux temps anciens. Tahiti aux temps anciens. Anciens. Okay. So I read about the concept of mana and yes. <laughs> <laughs> I do, I do some research before I hit record and cause I, I want to be as informed as possible. Um, but I, I did read about mana and it's, um, you know, throughout Polynesian culture and different, different parts of the culture and, and the South Pacific, um, and it has several understandings and origins and expressions, but how is it expressed in, in French Polynesia or in Tahitian culture? And are there any ways that mana relates to language? Yes, oh goodness, mana, uh, such a big word uh, for us Maohi people. Ooh, I can't talk about, about this word uh, for the, the entire day because there's so much to, to say about this. Mm -hmm. But uh, anyways, I'll make it short. So yeah, mana is a big word for us Maohi people. And today, many people come up with their own definition of the mana, their own perspective or understanding of the concept of the mana. But what I always knew and be taught uh, uh, you know, since I was a kid is that the mana is simply a life force that lives in our soul and fuel our spirit. It's something that you can feel, you know, it's, it's that, that connection we have uh, with the previous generations, with our ancestors or the people before us. It's uh, the uh, heritage uh, they, they have passed on to the next, genera next generation. It's uh, a transmission of the culture, 
the, the language, tradition, practices, customs, and all the value that comes with it, like respect, uh, family, peace, you know, all these things. And uh, the mana, it's something that you can feel right at that moment, moment of transmission or immersion. Mm. So yeah, it has to do with language also. As I say, language, culture, it's, it's the same thing. It goes together. You can dissociate that. And when you have that transmission from one generation to another, that's, there, there is some kind of like feel or spirit at, at, at that exact moment. So that's the mana. Now you can feel the mana at any a different time. And this is why people have their own way of understanding the mana because not everybody see the same, like understand things the same way, you know? So that's why everybody has their own interpretation. But this is how I've been taught uh, about the mana. Oh, interesting. So I want to know about your, your teaching. I want to know about Rio Titi and what were, how did you get started? What were some of your motivations for getting started and, and how is it going and tell us everything, but most importantly, <laughs> tell us how we can find you and how we can get in touch so that we can experience Tahitian language and culture. Yes, absolutely. So yes, I am teaching the Reo Tehiti, the Tahitian language online. Uh, my platform is called polylingual. It's actually a common word. A lot of people know that word, but I, I call it polylingual, poly for Polynesia and lingual for languages. That's why I separated both words, you know? Oh, okay. So poly for Polynesia and lingual for languages. Um, so I have students from all over the world, mostly from the USA, uh, across the nation. I have uh, two kind of students. We have uh, students uh, from uh, who are Polynesian dancers, uh, group leaders, musicians, drummers. Uh, and of course, it makes sense that they are... Uh, uh, motivated to learn the language because they are very involved in the Tahitian culture. Mm. And then I also have students who uh, want to learn Tahitian language really quick before traveling to French Polynesia. So a lot of travelers. Um, so yeah, I have those two kinds of, of, of students. I started teaching the Rio Tahiti at home. My husband is American, of course, and he's a passionate of Polynesian culture, uh, especially Tahiti. Uh, he was actually my first student. <laughs> my husband was my first student and uh and now I'm of course uh, teaching my girls also I have two girls I'm a mom um one is nine years old and the other one is 11 years old okay. and so at home my my home is my classroom you know we speak French and Tahitian at home uh it's not easy don't think it is it's totally hard <laughs> it is very very hard to teach your own kids uh, let me tell you, but I do my best to be as creative as possible mm -hmm. because I started uh, to uh, document all the, the the teaching I'm doing at home. So I'm going to share that on YouTube. I'm going to share to the world how we learn Tahitian at home, you know, and, and maybe people can, a lot of people can relate because it, my, my family is not Tahitian. You know, I'm the only Tahitian here. Uh, and uh, so they didn't learn the language. So they are 100% American with a, the 100% American accent. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, you know, I, I started documenting like all the, the, the teaching I'm doing at home. So anyways, if you guys are interested, check out my, my YouTube channel. Uh, I'm going to start publishing soon. Okay, perfect. So, Yes. <laughs> uh, but yeah, everything all started at home. It, and eventually, uh, people around us wanted to learn as well. And I decided to make it official and create an online platform. Uh, so that way, everybody uh, can have access, you know, and can learn Tahitian. Now, uh, polylingual, uh, I call it, as I say, poly for Polynesia and lingual for languages, we, we will not teach Tahitian only. Uh, we are actually planning to offer other languages of the South Pacific, oh, great. Uh, like the Fijian language, the Maori language, um, eventually the other languages too, even uh, the language from Rapa Nui. Uh, I'm working on it. It's, it's going to take me sometimes because it, it takes a lot of time, you know, to implement those languages. Right. But uh, the objective uh, of our uh, 
platform, it, we wanted to focus in all the languages of the South Pacific that are considered as endangered languages. Okay, that, That's the whole point, because we do have a lot of platforms and teachers and coaches, language coaches online, uh, who are teaching a lot of languages like French, Spanish, German, you know, it's everywhere, but all the other non-popular languages are not there. Uh, but uh, we, we would love to, to bring this online so that way people have access to those languages because um, our, our mission, we're, we're on the mission. Uh, I, I mentioned that earlier. Our mission is to perpetuate uh, the languages all over the world, those languages, especially before they disappear. Mm -hmm. so that, that's that's our mission. Everything we do here is to keep those languages alive. And the only thing, the only way we can do that is to to teach them and speak them. Uh, otherwise, it, yeah, it, it will eventually disappear. I think that's a beautiful <laughs> mission, and I totally support you. And I'm so happy that um, we've been able to have this conversation, and we've been able to talk about about these languages and, and upholding them and preserving them. And hopefully an episode like this is part of the preservation process. <laughs> exactly. So <clears throat> we're doing our best. It, it's not easy uh, because again, because they are not considered as, you know, like popular, or, you know, languages. So of course the interest is not as big as, you know, learn like people who want to learn French or Spanish or any other languages. Uh, but um, we know that uh, as a fact though, there is a movement happening across the South Pacific Islands uh, where uh, even the governments are backing us up with that, uh, where they want uh, the new generation, you know, to back to get back on track and, and learn the language. So we're basically following this movement as well. So yeah, that's why that's why we're doing this. Uh, honestly, this is really our, our mission. This is not about money. Uh, yes, there, there's money involved because it, it, it costs, you know, to, to make it happen, to create an online platform. But uh, truly, it, it's not about that. It's really, really to perpetuate as much as, uh, as we can. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. This has been a fantastic conversation. I've learned so much. <laughs> oh, good. Thank you. I've learned so much. <laughs> I hope so. And what I will do is I will take your links to your platforms and I will add them into the show notes for people who are listening. If they want to get in touch with you, they'll be able to click and find you right away. Yes, absolutely. Yes, you guys can follow me on Instagram. I share a lot of free content, you know, vocabulary. And uh, soon uh, I, I will share some um, uh, conversation practice uh, phrases. Uh, I just finished a Rio Teti challenge uh, in the beginning of the month of July. Um, so many things, you know, I do my best to share as much as I can. And then on YouTube, I do have a lot of videos. Uh, my YouTube channel is called Rio Teti for Beginners. Uh, feel, please check it out. Uh, you know, I, I spend a lot of time sharing uh, content there. And then if you guys are serious and really want to learn uh, the language, then yes, you can uh, check out my website, uh, polylingual.com. Uh, I have, we have three different programs. We have a group coaching program uh, where we meet every week uh, through Zoom. Uh, we also have an e-learning platform where you can learn on your own. It's a self pace uh, learning program. Uh, and I also offer some private lessons if uh, you guys are interested. But yeah, exciting. That's so exciting. <laughs> That's so exciting. Molina, thank you so much for having this conversation with me. And like I said, I've learned so much in this time that we've been talking. And I like to end each episode with the same question just on a just to end on a fun note. Do you have any jokes, tongue twisters, cool slang words, idioms, words of wisdom, or advice in Tahitian to share? Oh, yes. I Actually, I have plenty, but um, <laughs> there's something that I share with my students all the time, kind of like a word of wisdom, if I could say that, uh, but it's a saying, and we have that in English as well. Uh, it's the saying for go slow, but surely. Uh, I always, you know, share that with my students because, you know, learning a language is not that easy. Uh, it's, it's a journey, you know. And so I always encourage my students. So in Tahitian, we say, Haere maru 
haire papu. Haire maru, haire papu, which means uh, go slowly but surely. Haire maru, haire papu. Yes. Wow. Perfect pronunciation. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, haire maru, haire papu. So yeah, go slow but surely. As long as you get it. It's not about the speed. You know, it's about the journey. Okay. Oh, yeah. My first Tahitian words. <laughs> words of positivity and encouragement. I love it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Moi now, thank you so much again for this conversation. And before I let you go, I just want to ask you in Tahitian language, what would be the best way to say goodbye? Perfect. Okay, so there are two ways. Um, the first way it's parhe. Parhe actually means to sit down. But we turn this word uh, to a goodbye word, right? Because back in the day, again, language is related to culture, right? Back in the day, uh, when people, Tahitian people will greet each other, will have a meeting. Um, one is they are always sitting down and facing each other, like the Indian, the Native Americans. Okay. And uh, when the meeting is over, when the conversation is over, the one who, who is leaving, you know, leaving the meeting, he always tell the person who is sitting that, sit down, don't worry, I'm leaving. Okay. So that's why that word parhe, which means to sit down, also means goodbye. It's related to that, that uh, custom, you know, that we had back in the day. So to say goodbye in Tahitian is parhe, and then the second word is yaurana. So yaurana also means hello, greetings to you, but it also means goodbye. Uh, yaurana literally means may you leave. No, actually may you leave or like I wish you a good life. That's what yaurana means. So parhe yaurana? Yes. Okay. So me personally, for example, when I'm done with the conversation, a meeting or whatever, I always say, Parhe Yarana. So we say that. Parhe Yarana. Yes. Yeah. Very good. <laughs> yeah, that's the proper way to say goodbye. Another way to say goodbye, and that's the, the casual way, it's Nana. Nana. I love that. That's so yeah. cute. Nana is easy. <laughs> Nana is easy. But I love to teach people everything because, uh, again, uh, formal way is parhe yaurana. It's 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 formal, and and Nana it's very casual. Like hey, bye, you know, something like that. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you so much for give me, giving me this opportunity to share with you uh, about my culture and my language. It was a pleasure for me too. Absolutely. Thank you so much. And I'll be talking to you soon. Absolutely. Thank you. Maruru. <laughs> Bye. Bye, Nana. Nana.